You are listening to WCAT Radio, your station for quality Catholic programming. Your selected program will begin right after a word from our sponsor, Group M7.com, a web design and hosting company. Log on to Group M7.com today and let them know that WCAT Radio sent you. You know, my finest childhood memories was the Saturday morning movies for about four bits each. My brother and I could split a Coke and a big box of popcorn and watch movies about Tarzan, Jane, and their Amazon River adventures. Well, maybe that's where Jeff Bezos took his name. His Amazon.com is now the largest online retailer in the world. I'm Michael Malfood with Group M7, the oldest and largest website design firm in East Texas. And here's my point. And as usual, it's a good one. If your website is modern and up-to-date, mobile and search engine friendly, it matters not whether you sell a product or provide information about your goods and services, your sales justifiably will increase just like theirs. The world uses the internet. We can improve your website and your email. Look at our giant portfolio at groupm7.com. Since 1995, there's only one web and there's only one group and it's us. It's Group M7. You're listening to WCAT Radio, your home for authentic Catholic programming. Well, God bless you. Welcome to Treasures in Heaven. From all of us at WCAT Radio, we're glad you're with us. I am your host, Dr. William Ailes. In this show, God's Visitation, Angels, Part 2. Christ revealed this about angels. Are they not all ministering spirits sent out to minister to those who will inherit salvation? In the New Testament, we see how angels watch over God's creation, mankind, and in addition, how we shall be like the angels. In the New Testament, Christ and his apostles draw connections between angels and humans. We learn about the function of angels and their role in our lives now and in the future. We see the works of mankind and we see blessings or consequences that follow. In the last show, we covered how angels are messengers, warriors, and ministers. Throughout the Gospels, our Lord reveals specifics about the role of angels. And in the book of Acts and following, we see such rich revelation about the nature and function of angels. We see how angels truly watch over God's creation, how we shall be like the angels, how angels played an important role in the life and times of Christ, prophecies issued by angels, and how they will again play an important role in the life and times of Christ at the time of Christ's second coming to the earth. We're going to begin in Hebrews chapter 1, and we're going to see this narrative on how the author talks about angels and talks about the Son of God, drawing a contrast between the two. Let's just listen to this amazing record of Hebrews 1 which will conclude with how angels are sent to minister to those who will inherit salvation. Hebrews 1, verse 1, God, who at various times and in diverse ways spoke long ago to the fathers through the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, and through whom he made the world. He is the brightness of his glory, the express image of himself, and upholds all things by the word of his power. Speaking of Christ, how he is the express image of God, the brightness of his glory. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, He was made so much better than the angels as he has inherited a more excellent name than they. Verse 5. 
For to which of the angels did he say at any time, You are my son, today I have become your father? Or again, I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Of course, these are prophecies that referred to the coming Christ, the Christ child, who would be the son of God. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. Of the angels, he says, he makes his angels spirits and his servants a flame of fire. But to the Son, he says, your throne, O God, lasts forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. Look at this contrast between the Son of God, Christ, and angels. It's the Son of God who will have the throne forever and ever, whose kingdom will last forever and ever. Angels worship him. This continues about the Son of God. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness, more than your companions. And you, Lord, laid the foundation of the earth in the beginning. And the heavens are the works of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They all will wear out like a garment. As a cloak, you will fold them up, and they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will not end. But to which of the angels did he say at any time, sit on my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool? Are they, the angels, not all ministering spirits sent out to minister to those who will inherit salvation? Now the narrative comes back around to us. We, as mankind, who believe that Jesus is the Christ. We are the ones who inherit salvation. And we know that God is telling us that these angels are sent forth, they're sent out to minister to those who will inherit salvation. So every one of us who will inherit salvation has a ministering spirit, an angel that worships God, worships the Lord Jesus Christ. They have a mission to watch over us, to minister to us. Recall how after Christ was tempted in the wilderness, angels were sent to minister to him. Now, do we know exactly what that means No, God does not reveal this exact interaction between man and angels. All we need to do is embrace the fact that it's true. Obviously, there are times when angels do appear to men. We saw that in the last show. That's completely up to God if an angel is going to appear to one of us. That's his decision That's spiritual phenomenon that we have no control over. But we do know that we are not alone on this planet. The Lord Jesus Christ sits at the right hand of God. The Creator is on the eternal throne, reigning forever. And he sends forth his angels to minister to us who will inherit salvation. All we need to do is embrace that truth and be comforted by it. And if God chooses to let us in on how that's happening to us individually, that's up to him. But for me, it's enough to know that it's the truth. Very similar to this understanding that we have ministering spirits, we have this record from the Gospels about children. In Matthew 18, verse 2, Jesus called a little child to him and set him in their midst and said, Truly I say to you, 
unless you are converted and become like little children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Great example. Think of the humility of a child, a little child. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this little child is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever receives such little child in my name receives me. Now we have a warning. But whoever misleads one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for him to have a millstone hung about his neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea. It's a very strong warning from the Son of God how important little children are to the Creator. Woe to the world because of temptations. For it must be that temptations come. But woe to that man by whom the temptation comes. Yes, temptations come our way, no question about it. It's how we respond to those temptations. You know, James talks about temptations that entice and how we're dragged away because we are enticed by temptation. I mean, we're still flesh and blood. Temptations are part of the world, and obviously being enticed by them is part of the fleshly nature. But when we're born of God, we have a spiritual nature, a greater nature within us, the the noble of the noblest within ourselves is that spirit within. Not to be enticed and dragged away by temptation. Now Christ is going to an extreme to make a point. Therefore, if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, in other words, if in the enticement, your hand is part of the enticement or your foot is part of the enticement and you're being dragged away, hand and foot, cut them off and throw them away. It is better for you to enter life lame or maimed than having two hands or two feet to be thrown into eternal fire. That's the end time judgment. In the Greek, it's the Gehenna, fire that never stops, the lake of fire and brimstone. It's a very stern warning. And... It's a constant reminder. What's the point of giving in to temptations that drag us away from Christ? There's no point. Verse 9, And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than having two eyes to be thrown into the fire of hell. I mean, that's a wake-up call to be faithful to the scriptures that we know. I mean, if that's not a wake-up call, what in the world would be? Now it comes back around to the little children. Christ says, See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I say to you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. These children have angels their angels always see the face of god who is in heaven in other words these angels have an audience with the father they watch over the little ones we dare not mislead little ones Our role is to raise them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. It's a great role to have. So here we see uh, from Hebrews, how those who will inherit salvation have ministering spirits. We also see that little children have angels watching them and always see the face of God, have an audience with the Creator. Now, the third avenue or dimension I wanted to cover here in the introduction is we see the angels, of course, as separate from us, and that certainly they are. What we do have in common is that we both, as angels and humans, worship the Lord Jesus Christ and the Father. 
Now we see a merging of the two, humankind and angels, in this prophecy given by Christ himself. In Mark 12, verse 18, the Sadducees, of course, are temple authorities. They did not believe in the resurrection of the dead. Of course, that's why they were sad, you see. The Sadducees, what a terrible position to take as a temple authority to reject the resurrection of the dead. I mean, they eliminate the hope. I mean, I'll never really understand that. I mean, I mean that's the power of the dark angel influencing temple authorities to remove this glory of the future resurrection. Anyway, so that's the backdrop. The Sadducees reject the resurrection, and now they're going to try to tempt Jesus Christ. Bad move. Mark 12, 18, then the Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to him saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies and leaves his wife behind, but leaves no children, that man must take the wife and raise up children for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first took a wife, and when he died, he left no children. The second took her and died, leaving no children. A third likewise. The seven had her and left no children. What a terrible scenario that is. This poor woman. She's gone through seven husbands and not one child. Last of all, the woman died too. Quite a scenario the Sadducees have cooked up, trying to tempt Jesus in the resurrection, which they, of course, reject. When they rise, when they, whose wife will she be? For she had seven as her wife. Jesus answered them, you do err, which means you're sadly mistaken, because you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God. And these are the temple authorities who supposedly are to lead God's people. They are blind in one eye and blind in the other eye because they don't know the scriptures and they don't know the power of God. Blind in both eyes. This is the punchline. This is the prophecy. When they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like the angels in heaven. There it is. We, as the saved ones of mankind, in the resurrection, are like the angels in heaven. To me, that's astounding. This is a prophecy given to us. We have a prophecy about those who shall inherit salvation. We have ministering spirits. And another prophecy that those of us who are raised unto eternal life shall be like the angels. For me, that is tremendous comfort. There is no marriage in the next world, the next life. We shall be like the angels. I so look forward to that day. So with that backdrop, with this understanding of how angels watch over us, watch over children, how, as we saw, of course, in the Old Testament in the previous show, how Angels can interact with humans and look like humans, or they can interact with humans and obviously be angels uh, for obvious reasons. So it behooves us to understand more about what's revealed about angels, to listen to these records that refer to angels their role, their place, what they're doing, and we learn about what shall be, you know, for us personally. Central to all this, of course, we worship the God of heaven, just like the angels do. So, we're now going to look at records in the Gospels that refer to Christ. Christ speaking, Christ prophesying, and he brings angels into the prophecies of what shall be. Matthew 16, verse 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, 
if anyone, if anyone will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So here it is, a great record. If we're following Christ, we deny ourselves, which means that we elevate our will to the will of Christ for our lives, as opposed to our own will for our own lives. Now, the will of Christ, as revealed in the scriptures, becomes our desire, our goal, our will. That's what it means to deny ourselves. It doesn't mean you deny yourself food and you starve to death. Of course not. It's denying the will of self, which is at cross purposes with the will of heaven, the will of God, the will of our Lord and Savior. Take up his cross and follow me. So two things, we elevate our will to the will of heaven, and second, we take up his cross. And his cross was to do the will of God no matter what. Obviously, suffering was a part of that. But that was necessary for the plan of salvation to be fulfilled. So we don't question God. We simply leave the plan to God, and we are the ones who carry it out to the best of our ability, following his will. Verse 25, For whoever would save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. This is a fantastic presentation. Whoever would save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Well, we just described what it means to lose his life or to lose our lives for Christ's sake. And we find it. Our true fulfillment, our true purpose is found in denying ourselves, elevating our will to the will of heaven as found in the scriptures, and following being faithful regardless. Obviously, we pray for the best all the time, but we follow his will regardless. And we find our true light. We find our true fulfillment. Just look at all the saints that have gone before us. Look at all their testimonies. There's so many. That's where we find our true life, as opposed to someone who decides they are not going to follow Christ, they're going to follow their own life, and they're going to amass you know, wealth on this planet, they're going to amass power on this planet. They're looking out for number one themselves, but in the consequences, they lose their soul. They lose everything. They gambled away their entire eternal life for an empty life. And here it is, verse 26, for what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? You know, Matthew 16, 26 is what we just read. That should be just on the tip of our tongues, just branded in our hearts. What will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? In other words, you lost if that's what happens. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Here's the prophecy, verse 27. For the Son of Man shall come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay every man according to his works. That should also be on the tip of our tongue. That should also be branded in our hearts. Our Lord and Savior will return with his angels in the glory of his Father. And at that time, he will repay every man according to his works. Obviously, good works yield Glory, blessings, as we know, Paul says, rewards, treasures in heaven. Obviously, works that are at cross purposes with God's will will earn nothing. Um, and of course, if you reject the Son of God, which is the worst decision anyone can make, and continue with works of the flesh, works of the world, then the ultimate repay is a of course, what we read earlier, laid the lake of fire. 
That's a bad choice to make. A good choice to make is to embrace the truth, which is Jesus is the Christ. So he will come with his angels in the glory of his Father. His angels will accompany the Son of Man when he comes back to earth and sits on his throne and he reigns. Now here's another one, another prophecy. Matthew 13, verse 24. He told them another parable, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. But when the shoots had sprung up and produced fruit, the weeds also appeared. So the servants of the landowner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? Then where did the weeds come from? He said to them, An enemy did this. The servant said to him, Will you then have us go and gather them up? He said, No, lest while you gather up the weeds, you pull up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather up the weeds first and bind them in the bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Of course, this is a prophecy of the end times. He's going to explain it. Verse 31. He told them another parable, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. This indeed is the least of all seeds. But when it has grown, it is the greatest among herbs and is a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in its branches. And told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast, which a woman took and mixed in 60 pounds of meal until it had leavened the whole batch. Jesus said all these things to the crowds in parables, and without a parable he did not speak to them to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will say things which have been kept secret since the foundation of the world. Then Jesus now explains. Then Jesus sent the crowds away and went into the house. And his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, He who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the sons of the kingdom. But the weeds are the sons of the evil one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. Doing God's bidding, doing Christ's bidding, angels will reap at the time of the end of the world. Verse 40. Therefore, as the weeds are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of the world. The Son of Man shall send out his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and those who do evil, and will throw them into a fiery furnace. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Yeah, at the time of judgment, there's going to be a lot of crying and gnashing of teeth. But the wages of sin is death. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. So here we have prophecies of the end of the world. Angels are going to basically harvest the earth. And those who chose wrongly will be harvested, bound, and thrown into the lake of fire. And those who chose rightly to embrace the truth will shine forth. We will be the righteous, shining forth as the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Of course, that's for ever, for eternity, for choosing properly in this world, in this life, our reward or our blessing, our glory is eternal life in the kingdom of our Father. The angels do the Lord's bidding. The angels will be the reapers. These are our coming attractions as the righteous. We have ministering spirits who watch over us. 
we are the ones who will inherit salvation. And in the end, we shall be like the angels. I'm going to read these key verses. We're going to conclude with this. In Hebrews 1.14, Are they not all ministering spirits sent out to minister to those who will inherit salvation? Let's embrace that. We have ministering spirits. We have angels that watch over us. That's the testimony of Scripture. We know our little children. Christ says, For I say to you that in heaven... Their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. And then finally, we know this. When they, that's us, the righteous rise from the dead, we neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. We know the angels will play a significant role at the time of the second coming of Christ to planet Earth. And we do know we shall be like them. Well, that's part two of God's visitation, angels. And we're going to continue with this show when we talk about prophecies the angels gave us about the second coming of Christ. Well, for all of us at WCAT Radio, God bless you and good night. The mission of Holy Apostles College and Seminary is to form faithful witnesses of Christ. Year after year, the prestigious Newman Guide has recommended holy apostles for our academic excellence and steadfast fidelity to the magisterial teachings of the Catholic Church. We are also fully accredited and the leader in Catholic online learning. Our students enjoy the unsurpassed flexibility to study on their own time and anywhere in the world through asynchronous engagement. Holy Apostles is dedicated to the relentless pursuit of truth, which allows students in all academic programs, including undergraduate, graduate, and personal interest, to formulate a coherent worldview based on both faith and reason. The study of the liberal arts also develops and refines key competencies associated with career readiness, such as critical thinking and problem solving, clear communication, collaboration, and a strong work ethic. The tuition rate at Holy Apostles is one of the most affordable in the country. Yearly tuition for a full-time undergraduate is under $12,000. Students at Holy Apostles can graduate with minimal or even no college debt, which enables them to live out their calling as faithful witnesses of Christ without heavy financial burdens holding them back. Please visit www.holyapostles.edu forward slash admissions for more information. The fall 2021 admissions deadline is Friday, July 23rd. Classes start Monday, August 30th. See you soon. Hello, God's beloved. I'm Annabelle Mosley, author, professor of theology, and host of Then Sings My Soul and Destination Sainthood on WCAT Radio. I invite you to listen in and find inspiration along this sacred journey we're traveling together to make our lives a masterpiece and, with God's grace, become saints. Join me, Annabelle Mosley, for Then Sings My Soul and Destination Sainthood on WCAT Radio. God bless you. Remember, you're never alone. God is always with you. Thank you for listening to a production of WCAT Radio. Please join us in our mission of evangelization. And don't forget, love lifts up where knowledge takes flight.